everyone in this session we are going to continue with our OAuth series so in this uh, video we are going to discuss the OAuth 2.0 client credential flow for servers to server integration in Salesforce so let's start starting with the basics firstly we'll discuss what is the OAuth protocol it is basically an industry standard protocol for authorization OAuth is an open protocol that authorizes a client application to access data from a protected resource through the exchange of tokens so whenever we are integrating one application to another application and we make a call out from one application to another external application we firstly need to authorize to that application so OAuth is the protocol where we are going to use to authorize to applic authorize to that application without the use of the passwords so we in OAuth we have the OAuth tokens uh, basically OAuth tokens are essentially permissions given to the client application the resource server can validate the tokens and allow the client application access to the defined protected resources. In Salesforce, we can use the OAuth authorization to approve a client application's access to our org's protected resources. Let's say an external application wants access to some Salesforce data. So firstly, they'll connect to Salesforce, they'll authorize to Salesforce using some or the another OAuth protocol. So uh, what is the OAuth 2.0 client credential flow in Salesforce? So sometimes you want to directly share information between two applications without a user getting in the way. So in the last video of the OAuth 2.0 web server flow, we discussed that firstly, uh, uh, the first step in that flow would be HTTP redirection to the application, to the Salesforce application, let's say, and the user will have to log in. After login, they'll get the authorization code and then the access token. But sometimes we need, uh, like without a user getting in the way, we need the access token so we can use this flow. So in this flow, the client app exchanges its client credentials, that is the client consumer key and the consumer secret for an access token. This flow eliminates the need for explicit user interaction, though it does not it does require you to specify an execution user to run the integration. So we'll see this step when we do the demo. And we can use this uh, flow for, as a more secure alternative to the OAuth 2.0 username password flow. So uh, Salesforce is now not uh, recommending the use of this flow since uh, uh, the username password flow, since uh, the username and password uh, the client credentials are being uh, sent back and forth. Uh, so as an alternative to that, we can use the client credentials flow. So let's see what are the steps involved in this flow. So firstly, the connected app sends its client credentials to the Salesforce OAuth token endpoint via POST request. So we'll hit the Salesforce OAuth token endpoint via POST request uh, with the client credentials, that is the consumer ID, consumer's key and the consumer secret. Then Salesforce validates those client credentials and authenticates the app. Salesforce returns the access token on behalf of the execution user we assigned. So in the connected app, we, which we create later in the demo, so we'll uh, have to assign an execution user. So uh, we'll see that. And the connected app uses the access token to call the Salesforce API, such as the REST API. So uh, once we get the access token, we can uh, use the standard Salesforce APIs like REST and uh, do whatever the whatever requested data we need, we can access that. So uh, now let's talk about the demo. So what we'll do in the demo. So firstly, we'll create a connected app in Salesforce and enable the client credential flow checkbox. And after that, we'll select the running user for that flow. Then we'll make a post request to the below endpoint. Uh, so my domain will uh, replace the my domain with the orgs my domain and uh, uh, with the services slash over two slash token URL. And then we'll uh, provide the below parameters in the in our request that is the grant type is equals to client credentials then the client id and the client secret that is from the consumer uh, that is from the connected app so uh, this flow uh, also the running user which we will select that running user needs to have the api only permission then only we can uh, uh, select that user for this flow so this api only permission is not available in the developer edition or but uh, don't worry, I have an enterprise edition org uh, that I created for the Salesforce function and which we are going to use it for this demo. So let's start. We are logged into our org and I am in the company information page and you can see this is an enterprise edition org, right? And uh, now I'm going to go to the app manager uh, just in the setup type app manager and this screen will come up and I'll click on new connected app. So we are going to create a new connected app for our client credential flow and we are going to enable the OAuth settings for this. Firstly, we'll type in the name 
So the name is line grid flow. We are going to provide an email. Then all these we can skip. Just select the enable OAuth setting. Uh, provide it in a callback URL. I am going to provide a random callback URL here. We can provide in the scopes. So I am going to provide these scopes. Manage user data by APIs. Full access. Do any now just set, enable this checkbox enable cr client credential flow so it is giving me an uh, warning anyone with the consumer key and consumer secret can access your flow just click on ok and then we are done we just need to do that just click on save we click on continue so we have created the connected app for this we have provided in the OAuth scopes and uh, now click on manage In the manage uh, under this client credential flow we are getting in the option to run as user click on edit policies to edit it click on uh, lookup so i'm going to provide this external user which i created right click on save so uh, we have successfully provisioned the connected app now let's let me show you this user so if, if I uh, go here and I uh, see I have applied a permission set, I have assigned a permission set. This is the API only permission set which I created. Uh, I, if I go to this permission set and I click on system permissions and then search for API only. So you can see this is the permission uh, API only user which I have selected. So uh, with this permission, we act, we can access salesforce.com only through a salesforce.com API. So we can only select a user with this checkbox as checked. So that I've given this permission set to that user. And now uh, like I have, we have provisioned the connected app. So now let's uh, go to Postman. So now I'm in Postman and I have set up Postman. Uh, I've provided in the three types. Uh, the three params that is the grant type is equals to client credentials the client id and the client secret so this is the consumer key and the consumer secret from the connected app and uh, you can get that by going into the manage connected apps and click on manage consumer details after you click this button you'll get those details so uh, now i provided in the url for it so this is the url that is the my domain dot my dot salesforce dot com slash services slash or two slash token that this is the salesforce token url and i will make a post request here you can get the my domain in your org by going into the my domain and this is your my domain name uh, so everything is set i am uh, making a post request i have provided in the uh, params so just click on send so the response is positive and I've got the access token you can see and I've got the instance URL and the token type is bearer. So now I can use after once I get the access token I can use that in the headers. I'll provide the authorization bearer slash access token this access token and then I can make any rest request to Salesforce API. So uh, this is a lot better than using the username password flow where, the, where we have to provide in the username and the password and the username and password flows what is sent uh, set to and for. So this is a lot better than that. And uh, you can use these flows in your uh, whenever an external application needs to call Salesforce. So thanks everyone for watching this video and uh, uh, do like the video and subscribe to the channel for more such videos. Thanks everyone.